Good afternoon. Welcome to St. John the 23rd Parish. Thank you for coming to celebrate with us today. My name is Nancy. Today's theme is God's mercy for the poor and humble. Our announcements are as follows. Vera Bradley Bingo is tomorrow at 1 p.m. in the Arcade Hall. You can still buy tickets today in the main vestibule or tomorrow at the door. Doors open at 11 a.m. Come join us Thursday for the fourth episode of season two of The Chosen. The opening hymn is number 303, Gather Us In. Please stand and greet your neighbor as we begin this celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We welcome you today as we celebrate the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. If you think back a week ago where we heard the gospel of the persistent widow who would go before that judge pleading that cause, and our, our goal from that gospel last Sunday was to be persistent in prayer and never give up. Well, today is the follow-up to that, where we're called to be humble, to know that God's the one who can answer our prayers and, and not just think about ourselves, but think about the ways in which God can help us and those around us. And it's from words of this tax collector today, as we hear the, the Pharisee and the tax collector, that parable, that we hear about Lord having mercy for us. So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, 
God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, see on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw Till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right. And the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord hears of the poor. The Lord hears the cries of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cries of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord hears the cries of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cries of the reading 
from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of salvation. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke his prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you, who around here in this church right now likes paying income taxes? Really, none of us like to do that, right? I mean, we don't like to do it at all. And um, I, don't, I'm, I join you in that, in that regard. But, you know, in reality, we need them, right? So if you want a police force in the town of West Seneca, you've got to pay your taxes, right? We, we, we need the sewers to work. We need the water authority to be able to do its job. Um, we, we use it for so many services. And uh, I'm just like you, that I will look for any deduction that I can find or any type of credit that I can find. We all try and do that. But I'm probably a little bit unlike you, that I, I do my taxes at the last minute. I may pretend that I'm going to do them early, and I'll say I'm going to do them early. But, you know, it isn't until close to April that I'll do them every year, and then I'll, I'll, I'll submit them. 
And I'm always kind of with my fingers crossed making sure I have all the forms when I'm filling out the documents because I, I don't do it immediately. But I will tell you, if I got a letter from the IRS or if it comes in, I get an email of what's coming in the mail. If the IRS writes to me, it's the first letter I open when it comes in the mail because I want to see what they're saying to me. And I think we all do that. And it's kind of the context of this particular parable, the way we would look at taxes. We have to pay them, but we don't enjoy them. And that's Americans. If we were to go to Italy, the amount of tax evasion that occurs out there is just almost astronomical. In Western Europe, we're going to go back about 10 years, there was 200 billion euros was unreported in Italy. And actually, um, it's the highest country in, the, in Europe where people do not pay their taxes. And in Italy, 80% of the Italians would say, my neighbor doesn't pay their fair share, that they're cheating the government. So there's sort of a whole underground economy that exists really worldwide that sort of forms the basis of this parable. Because no one likes taxes, and just like I opened the letter from the Internal Revenue Service that they should mail something to me, it's not because I love that letter the best, it's because I'm suspicious, right? I would do that. And it gives you the backdrop of this. So we today hear a parable about how we're supposed to pray. And last week we were told to be persistent in that prayer. But today we hear that whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And think about that. If you know somebody who's very full of themselves, thinks they're the greatest, we don't like them very much, do we? So automatically we start discounting the words that they say and and their personality to us, and they end up being lowered just automatically by a, by a social society. But also, we know that God doesn't like it either. He wants us to be humble when we come before him and, and ask him for what we need. So to me, anybody that I meet is, that is humble, which would be part of society, I think we'd all agree in this, it relaxes us. When I meet someone who's genuine, my defenses go down, I'm happy to talk to them, and we can have a real heart-to-heart -heart discussion. And it's because I can feel that I can be who I am, I don't have to prove myself to that other person, and I'm able to have a really good discussion with that person. And that shows us the same prayer conversations that we need to have with God. Truly humble people that we meet, they have a gift to us, because they know who they are internally, and they also want to share those gifts with those around them. They're not trying to be haughty, and that's kind of a message that we hear. So the readings this weekend are all about the vice of pride. When we start thinking that we're better than others that we live with, or who we interact with, or we think that we're better than, and when we hear these readings, those are the prayers that we hear in these readings that will not be answered. So our first reading from the book of Sirach, which ties into this gospel very clearly, it says the prayers of the lowly, those are the most humble. They will pierce the clouds and reach the unseen throne of God, meaning he will hear our prayers when we're genuine and when we do it with a, with a sense of humility. But when we're haughty, when we're exalted, we will be humbled because God will not listen to those prayers as we hear from Sirach, but also we see it in the message of the Pharisee and the tax collector. So let's take a look at these two people. I've talked about tax collectors. Nobody wants them to knock on your door or to ring your doorbell. So we can only imagine how they were in the time of biblical times. But Pharisees are these churchgoer types. They're supposed to be really good people, right? So people that go to church, we expect them to be honest and be caring and all these things. But that's not at all what we see in this parable today. We have this parable of this Pharisee who's probably got beautiful garments on, who comes into the church, and he says, it's all about me. And what St. Thomas Aquinas says of the Pharisee in this parable is that he's not praying at all. He's not asking God to change him or change the world in which he lives. Instead, all he's doing is he's just stroking himself and saying he's doing such a great job. But even Thomas Aquinas, through the ages, 
has told us that this Pharisee who thinks he's got it all together, he will be last in the kingdom of God. But when we look at that tax collector who won't even raise his eyes, and he says, have mercy on me, a sinner. And he speaks to God in that humility and that humble way. Those are the hearts that will change not only that tax collector, but also God himself. And who will be there to listen to those prayers, to journey with that person, and to make them ever stronger. It becomes almost a parable of the great reversals. Because we would think that the tax collectors would be the one kicked out. But instead, it's the Pharisee who's kicked out. And the tax collector is welcomed. So think in your own life as we begin this week how you can be more humble with those around you. Because when what we live in a world in which internet and TV and social media and all these things will allow us to think that we're really very exalted, that we don't sin anymore, that we don't make mistakes, that we're perfect, that we do everything right. That's what this Pharisee represents. But I think you and I know that we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We're a work in progress. And we need masses like today to help us come around this altar and say, Lord, help me. Help me be the better person that I want to be. And look at myself and do a little self-reflection about how you can grow in the virtues that God has in store for each one of us. They're blessings that we receive from him that are to be used for good measure. But when we start only thinking about ourselves, we kind of lose the forest through the trees. I was researching on what's the grace of, of being humble. Because we live in America, and we don't want to be humble. We want to sometimes be more you know, self-confident and full you know, that way. But psychologists will tell us that there's three different ways that you can grow in humility and that will all, you know, will bear fruit for you in your world. And the first thing you want to do to grow in humility is embrace who you are, warts and all. To know that you're not perfect and don't tie success and failure to who you are, but know that you're made number one in God's image. You're made good. And sometimes the choices that we make are good and sometimes they're not so good. But be happy who you are, look yourself in the mirror, and be proud of the person that you are because you're made in God's image. It's the first way of achieving humility is just being comfortable in your own skin. Also, what's important is to take a little time to figure yourself out in terms of taking a look at your life and the virtues that you have and the graces, those gifts that you have, and whether they're being used for the benefit of others, like your family and those that you work with, if you're working for them in that way, or you're just doing it for yourself. If it's all about you, you haven't self-reflected because every one of us is a work in progress and we can grow in patience, grow in charity, grow in love, grow in faithfulness. We can grow in so many dimensions and God gives us the grace of this day in order to achieve that. But if we're going to be humble, we got to see where we can grow and where we can self-reflect. And the third aspect of being humble is to be grateful, to have gratitude. When we have gratitude, we know that every blessing that we receive, it's from God. Our kids, our job, our careers, our retirement, our savings account, everything that we have is God's gift. Not something we earned, but that God gave us the grace to have. So as we celebrate humility this week, we celebrate it in three ways. Number one, embracing who you are, being comfortable in your own skin. Number two, where you can grow, self-reflecting, how you can get a little bit better. And third, being grateful for all the gifts that God has given you. Because the message of the gospel is clear. Those that are exalted will be humbled. Those that are humbled will be exalted. And at the end of the world, we want to be exalted to the heavens. We want to live a life that we're truly called to live. And it's embracing the person that God made us to be and not taking things for granted, but looking to a loving and saving Lord. You know, the Pharisee and the tax collector, they both walked into church, but only one person was changed. It was the tax collector. The Pharisee thought he was all fine. 
walks out the same. It's not the way you want to live your life. As you leave the church this day, you want to be renewed. And through that renewal, it means you got to be humble. So think where you can be more humble with those that you live with, those that you work with, those that you interact with in the neighborhood, in the stores, and do those acts of kindness without asking for any credit, because the humble will be exalted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to rise as we now renew our baptismal promises using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our petitions to the Lord with great humility, who hears the cry of the humble and of those in need. That the church, for you and I, as we begin the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time, may we be continued to be graced with shepherds after Christ's own heart, and may we be shepherds to those entrusted to our care with hum humility and sincerity of heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders who are elected officials locally and also internationally, may they be guided by the Holy Spirit in always working for the common good and doing it with a generosity of heart and with great humility to work for world peace, take care of our environment, work for a gospel of life, and do all those gospel values. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the ways that we can be brokenhearted, down on our luck, feel on our own, that through our humility we may, through these prayers of the faithful, just lift up our own intentions in prayer. And for those that are crushed by a spirit of poverty or oppression, that God may work with them and hear their prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may cleanse every one of us with a self-righteousness, so that may we really work in our families, our communities, our neighborhoods, our parish, our schools, and teach those to pray with humility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, yesterday I, I had a funeral for a woman named Evelyn Reagan, one of the pillars of our parish, the mother of nine children, and um, really offered a loving service to those children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So at times she used to have holes in her shoes, and her kids would tell her that, and she would say, don't worry about me. That's humility in terms of a mother's love. We pray for our Mass intentions, uh, which is for John and Eugene Zedzilka. Uh, and uh, we pray that on behalf of Joyce. And so for John and Eugene, may they live in glory forever in heaven with God and all the saints and angels. We pray to the Lord. I apologize. We also have other Mass intentions. Uh, this, um, I apologize. That's actually next Saturday's. We pray for Wallace S. Piotrowski and Brian Brakikowski, and though both of those families are here, I apologize, but we also remember John and Eugene. But for Wallace and Brian and all the faithful departed, may they live in glory forever in heaven with God and the saints and angels, and may we meet them again, we pray to the Lord. And for those prayers that we voice now, 
in the silence of our hearts. And we make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, hear these prayers and petitions that we bring before you with humble hearts and answer them in accordance with your holy will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm. Precious Lord, lead me home. When the way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, Precious Lord, lead me home. Please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, that these offerings we make to your majesty and whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the and the power and the glory are yours, are yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Sometimes they strew his way And his sweet praises sing Resounding all the day Hosannas to their king Then crucify is all their breath and for his death they thirst and cry why what has my lord done what makes this rage and spite he made the lame to run he gave the blind their sight sweet injuries yet they at these themselves displease and against him rise they rise and needs will have my dear Lord made away a murderer they save the prince of life they slay yet cheerful he to suffering goes that he his foes from thence might free in life no house, no home, my Lord on earth might have, in death no friendly tomb, but what a stranger gave, what may I say, heaven was his home, but mine the tomb wherein Might I stay and sing No glory so divine Never was love, dear King Never was grief like thine This is my friend In whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly Spend. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, and what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we were having communion, I was thinking about or meditating about the fact that God humbles himself and comes to us in that form of Eucharist and how we become what we eat to offer that humility to the world. And every time we gather at Mass, we, we pray that uh, Last Supper. And the Last Supper shows him taking a water basin and washing the disciples' feet. And then we're all called to live lives of humility and service that way. So may we become what we eat as we celebrate these readings today and also this Mass today. Tomorrow is Vera Bradley Bingo, which is really a good, good opportunity to have some fun here at the parish. Um, it's a Bill's Bye week, so it's at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I encourage you to go to it. There is a ticket booth in our front vestibule to join up. It's $25 for a registration board. There are walk-ins free tomorrow. Come on and walk in. It's still $25 a board, but you can walk in, you know. Um, and join us tomorrow for the event. There's home-cooked food, um, there's great prizes, there's been a lot of work that's been put into it. So please join us tomorrow in the afternoon. You will enjoy that. If you can get in that November calendar raffle, I'd be grateful for that as well. And then join us this Thursday for Chosen, um, that series. It really has been a great series so far, um, but I know you'll enjoy it. So please come on Thursday as well. So hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow at Vera Bradley Bingo. If you can sign up for it after Mass, I'd be grateful. It helps us for numbers, just to know, sort of know where we are. But get on the horn, call people, and then just pile in there tomorrow afternoon. You'll have a good time. I'll be actually calling out the numbers. Hopefully I have a voice for it. I'm hoping I do. But I will try to, you know. So 
Um, please know my prayers for you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Fill the heavens with sweet accord.